There was no point in me looking in the mirror being like, I'm beautiful when I know that I didn't think that. it. Anyone that grows up ugly, y'all will know you gotta win people over with personality. Even till today, I have the fear that I might wake up tomorrow and find strands of hair on my pillow again. I kind of was experiencing symptoms of an eating disorder. And at that point in time, as a naive child, I thought that I was doing myself a favour. Hi everyone, welcome to Tea Talks, a show where we trade tea for stories on the streets. And today we're going to be talking about our insecurities and hopefully through this we'll learn how to gain a bit of self-love. So for today's episode, it's extra exciting because we yeah. have a guest with us. That's right. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Yeah. Hi okay. everyone. Hi. Hello. Hi. Oh, she's so excited, you see. Yes. Start up, start up. She's so Giving excited. Giving me chaotic energy. Hi. Um, for those of you who don't know me, hi, I'm Brenda. I go by Word Read Online and I'm a YouTuber, content creator, and I also do a bunch of other things. This is one of the other things. <laughs> Being like uh, in the influencer industry, media industry, is there anything that you feel insecure about yourself or is there any struggles with insecurities that you faced? I think like as we all do, we just usually go through phases of different insecurities. Um, but the one that stuck with me the most was definitely um, having eczema and having issues with my skin growing up. Yeah, so me and both of my brothers, like we all have different severities of eczema and like we I mean obviously when you're a child and if no one really properly explains to you how normal this is like it can make you feel very alienated like, oh I don't know what's wrong with me like why do I feel so ugly and why do people like point out stuff at you and go like you what's that like why are you like this how were you then oh I was so like as long as I could remember to be honest like it used to be way worse when I was a kid like, it used to be on the backs of my knees. Like, I couldn't stand up straight. And like, oh, this is like bringing back so many like, just deeply like traumatic memories of my mom having to be like very gentle with like cotton pads and just blotting away like the dried, like crusty plasma nonsense. How do you feel when you were going through all of that? What were your thoughts? Yeah, I think not only was it intimidating, but it was also very frustrating and very deeply embarrassing. Like, to have something on your skin and have people ask you, like, why are you like that? You never shower. Like, it was just very difficult for me to explain, like, oh, this is not contagious. Right. You know, like, why Why would a five-year-old know that word unless right. you have to explain yourself to everyone that you meet? How do you, like, grow, like, from that season to, like, now? What was your growth journey? I'm going to be very honest and say that if my skin hadn't gotten better... Like, during my teenage years, I don't know if I would have half of the confidence that I do now. Because, like, it's just something that affects so much of you in terms of your appearance. So, there was no point in me looking in the mirror being like, I'm beautiful when I know that I didn't think that, that and I didn't believe it. Um, so then I would try to find other things in my life about me as a person that I was proud of and that I was confident in. And I knew that Anyone that grows up ugly, y'all will know you gotta win people over with personality. <laughs> my aunt used to call me ugly duckling. Yeah, they would say, oh my Why god, as a child, you are so ugly. Yeah, they used to do that to me, but I guess I am quite humorous. So I always use humor to cope. You can just like take it in your stride and not let it affect you. And like, the people around you love you for reasons way more than just like your skin and like how conventionally beautiful that you are, you know. So I think like it's, it was important for me to remind myself like I am funny, I am smart, like I'm a good person and try not to let that affect the other parts about me that I cannot control. And in my industry, spoiler alert, people are literally famous for being beautiful. And to be in the same line of work as them and to not be known as beautiful. <laughs> like, it's, I mean, it's not a dig at myself. It's just I'm known for other things. And that's the thing that I pride myself on. Are there like some people that really help you through this entire journey towards, you know, self-empowerment and self-love? Definitely. For me, like, my partner is very accepting and, like, she truly doesn't... Not only doesn't mind, but, like, 
is understanding about why it flares up and like she never makes me feel ugly about anything ever and I just feel very like seen and very loved like for example today I have three massive please feel free to do a close up you know I tried very hard to hide it I have three <laughs> massive pimples and I was like oh I've got to shoot with OGS like please why and I kept complaining to her I was like I'm so ugly and then she'd be like no you're not yeah, and I'm like never mind thanks but you know like I just say only but she will literally stop me to be like no like you're very cute like I need to know that then I'm like okay thank you oh that's so cute yeah. eh? and that feels so nice like I think it's very important to have someone in your corner like that who will always be rooting for you and that you know will always be rooting for you Aww. This episode is actually sponsored by QV. Yeah. Me and my brothers have literally been using this exact QV cream for maybe like 15 years. We had like one tub each in every room and like it was I think recommended by the dermatologist. So I think like it's just something that we stuck with because it works. It does a very good job of like moisturizing the skin and it doesn't leave like the skin feeling very tacky or very heavy also. So I think like for me to continue building my sense of self-confidence, your whole routine is super important. Like I'm doing actual good habits that will help me make sure that my skin stays moisturized and yeah so that's why we like it <laughs> yeah <laughs> just wanted to ask if you have any advice for anybody who's going through issues or struggling with self-love my advice is don't stop trying yeah don't stop trying to love yourself don't stop trying to make yourself feel better there are also days where you just need to rest and zone out so cut yourself some slack if you're feeling like you don't love yourself today the best act of self-love is to just let that feeling sit with you and let it pass and to process it like I like journaling personally so like listen to yourself really think about like what you need right now and then just act accordingly mm. <laughs> yeah hope that was helpful that might have been the most big advice no no ever. it is it is helpful because sometimes we are just hard on ourselves for taking a day off and some days it's just not gonna be great that's yeah. fine that's okay. cool it's very inspiring and I also feel like at the same time hearing how it starts from young I hope that it also inspires like you know even the younger people to be able to like accept and like go through everything on your own I feel like I know it's difficult and it may not be easy but despite whatever that's going on you know that you can do it uh, I feel so warm and cuddly inside <laughs> welcome to Tea Talks <laughs> we this always is, feel this like this what that. it feels like to yeah. be on Tea Talks talking and drinking tea oh my gosh I wish you can stay here uh, all wish day wish I could exactly so should we just y'all just come back tomorrow then we'll just like check yeah. in with you guys oh my god yeah yeah, yeah sure 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 okay. hey, I, hey I think the universe <laughs> is sending a great. sign <laughs> we do have a guest waiting for us so shall we invite him in yeah hello thank you for joining Hi. us of course so today we're actually talking about insecurities if you are comfortable to share may I know if you have any insecurities I think for me my biggest insecurity would definitely be my weight uh. Yeah. Okay. I feel like I'm too big, you know? Okay. Like, I feel like the mirror is my greatest enemy sometimes. Okay. I think when I was around 12, it was, I think, the hardest point in my life because I was at my heaviest. I was also facing a lot of bullying from others, a lot of segregation. And it aggravated a lot of the personal struggles that I had. I kind of was experiencing symptoms of an eating disorder. I would like puke out all the food. And at that point in time, as a naive 12 year old, I thought that I was doing myself a favor. Mm. Up until when I went into secondary school and more education was put out, that all of these were signs of eating disorders. Does your parents know about this? Your friends or? My parents? And unfortunately not. I didn't tell anyone until when I was when I was 16, which I think was when I was at my healthiest. And I think even now as an 18-year-old, the habits do come back sometimes. You you sometimes you take 10 steps forward, you then you take three steps back. You have come such a long way, but then one day you just feel like you haven't achieved as much. But to know that you have indeed moved a long way, I think it gives the motivation to move forward and be better. Yeah. Self-love. Yeah. Self-love. It is. It is not easy. 
But we must also learn to celebrate every progress. A progress is a progress. That's no right. matter how small. Thank you so much for sharing that. Yeah. My absolute pleasure. Oh man, self-love is such a tiring journey. Uh-huh. I have this condition called alopecia totalis, which causes me to lose my hair. So sometimes my hair might come back, sometimes I might lose it, I might lose it all. Even till today, I have the fear that I might wake up tomorrow and find strands of hair on my pillow again. So it's really something that I have to learn to deal with every day. Kids especially, I have kids, you know, pointing out my hair to their moms because I used to have patchy hairstyles. And those were things that, you know, sort of uh, made me want to wear my cap and beanie on all the time because I just want to avoid having those kind of conversations. But as the years went on, I felt like this can also be a good um, educational point. If people ask me about it, then I'll just talk about it. Like, and I'll share about what alopecia is so you get more awareness. La. Wow. What made you go on to social media though to share about all these, your, your story? Mm, when I was first diagnosed, I felt really alone because among my classmates, among my family members, among anyone that I know, I'm the only one that is, you know, having this condition. So I couldn't find anyone to relate to. And... I just didn't want others to feel what I felt back then. And I managed to connect with a few alopecians in Singapore. A community is important to like progress towards loving yourself a bit more. Yeah. And I'm very grateful for that too. So thank you everyone on the internet yeah. for helping me. Yeah. I hope that it encourages you in your own journey to find self-love and to find your own identity and who you are as a person. Yeah, so if you enjoyed this episode you can like share, share and subscribe. subscribe and if you happen to see us on the sheets next time do join us for some tea yeah. Yeah. to the next one bye bye